They are online, so you can go ahead and download those to follow along with us. So now notice, uh, last Thursday, this is what we said. Oh, my Lord, Deacon Lockerbie, listen to this. <laughs> we said that there are 7,000. 487 promises in the Bible that God made to man. Mm. He made those. Now, the thing about God making promises is this. Share. Whatever he says he will do, you can go ahead and note that he will do it. Yeah. And not only whatever he says he can do, Deke, whatever he says you can do. See, there's two sides. My Lord. <laughs> Let me just excuse myself just for a moment. Because <laughs> y'all know, Shell, we need a funeral fan. You know that. <laughs> Whatever he says that you can do, you can go ahead and depend on that. If he says that he will give you something, Miss Merlene, yes, then in spite of how it may look, yes, yes, if he said, I will give you A, B, or C, then that means, Deacon Piggy, you can count on it. He will he can because God, when he gives a promise, everyone, and again, keep in mind, there are 7,487 promises found in the Bible to man. <laughs> my Lord, my Lord. So, since we started talking about that last time, we, if you don't mind, let's kind of just keep going in that same vein about the promises that we can look to in the Bible Let's just kind of keep going down this same trail. It's still under the uh, topic of the all umbrella because we looked at seven promises. Well, actually 12 promises. We were looking at 12 promises that had the word all in there. So what we want to do now is kind of just look at some more promises because listen, when, when you have a promise, Elaine, my Lord. So uh, if you find a promise in the Bible, it will definitely, now listen to this. If you find a promise in the Bible, it will definitely come to pass. God will do it and it will happen, Barbara. Now, it will happen. Now, listen to this. Everybody look this way. But sometimes, Shell, it doesn't. Now, I said two things. I said that if you find a promise in the Bible, it will happen. God will do it. It will come to pass. That's the first thing I said, Deacon Luckadoo. But then I said something else. I said sometimes it won't happen. So what we need to get a good understanding of, why does it not happen, Alma Daniel? I mean, because there are some reasons, and we're going to look at three reasons why if you bump into a promise, it may not happen. Now, it's not on the prom make promise maker side. <laughs> it's not on his side. It's on somebody else's side, the receiver. Because the promise maker, he will do exactly what he says. Now, notice on your sheet. And uh, as we said, God has made 7,487 promises in the Bible. Notice that is on the screen. You can go ahead and claim them in Jesus' name. But now, Miss Flores, you have to ask yourself, why does the promises Elaine sometimes not happen? Why do they sometimes not come to pass? And the problem, Shell, is not the promise keeper. I mean, the promise maker. Now, notice the promise maker. Notice this, Titus 1 and 2, it says this. This is talking about the promise maker. It says, in hope of eternal life, which God that cannot lie promised. 
out of those 7,487 promises, he is good for his word. He will do it and he will do it every time. When the word of God, Jones, goes out of his mouth, he said this, it shall not return unto me void. If I said it, I will do it. The problem is not the promise maker. The problem is... The ones who are receiving the promises. Now notice on his side, this you can bank on. Listen, if everything lines up on your side, Alma Daniels, and on his side, you best believe Deacon Luckadoo and Sister Luckadoo, it will happen. It will come to pass. Can't no devil out of hell stop it. Can't no man walking on the earth stop it. Breathe. It shall happen what he has for you. And sometimes he will whisper a promise to you and you are the only one he told something to that is called a revelation that God will give to you Jones and if God speak to you don't let nobody tell you what God told you will not happen don't let nobody tell you what God told you is not true because that was a conversation between you and God my Lord hmm mm hmm 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 Caesar, that was, was between you and God. He might not have said the same thing to Gene. Gene may not know about it. He may tell Shell something that he doesn't tell Merlene. But listen, if Miss Merlene doesn't understand it, you know why she doesn't? Because the promise wasn't given to her. It was given to Shell. Now what Shell need to do is just go ahead and walk in it. I receive it in Jesus' name. If nobody else... Believe that God told me to build an ark. I'm just going to keep uh, putting those two by fours up and running nails into them until it starts to rain. <laughs> and then that's when they'll know, yeah, God did tell that man something, didn't he? But I can't wait on you to catch up with what God and I were talking about. That was our conversation. I can't wait on you, my Lord. Mm-mm. If God done whispered something to you, go with it. Go with it. Mm -hmm. Go with it. The village may not understand it. Go with it. Go with it. Now notice this. It says, in hope of eternal life, which the promise maker, God, that cannot lie, promised. Notice when he did it. He did this before you came into the world. He promised before the world began. He said it such a long time ago, friend, it's still true. Now notice this. Hebrews chapter 16, verse, Hebrews chapter 6, rather, verse 18. Notice what it says. That by two immutable things in which it was impossible. Now everybody make sure, Miss Flores, make sure you let that hope watermelon go down your esophagus everybody get this in mind Barbara your God cannot lie Deke he cannot it's not that he will not you know some people just won't do it <laughs> thank you he cannot lie the Bible says, in hope of eternal life, which God that cannot lie promised before the world began. And notice what it says. It is impossible for God to lie. So you know what that means, Jones? That if by chance you find a promise, you hold on to it for dear life. It doesn't matter how it looks. Mm -mm. I don't care how the wind may blow. I don't care how the lightning may start flashing. I don't care what it looked like. Okay, it looks like we're in trouble. Friend, I'm not ever in trouble. Huh. Mm -mm. simply because I know a God who specializes in getting people out of trouble. You see, you call it trouble. God calls it an opportunity to show himself mighty and show himself strong. Because one day you're going to wake up and realize, man, all of these things, Miss Dorothy, they are really working together for my good, Greg. They really are. All things really work together for my good. He's going to say, I've just been waiting on you to believe it. Mm -hmm. That by two immutable things in which it was impossible.
impossible. Impossible for God to lie. Notice this. Numbers 23, 19, 8. God is not a man that he should lie. Mm -mm. So, starting off the bat, Shell, Dick and Caesar, Dick and Lucky Do, Miss Jean, Mary, Brie, Brenda Cole, Florence, <laughs> Dick Cole, Bar. Are y'all listening, Dick and Piggy? <laughs> My Lord, you're making me call the roll trying to figure out if you're listening. <laughs> and like, digging down, Sister Fry. Marley, I... <laughs> Thank you. Somebody finally said they were listening. <laughs> Man, if it came out of God's mouth, go to sleep. I will not be afraid of the arrows by day, nor anything that shows up at night. Why? Because my God neither slumbers nor sleep. Now, if I got somebody, Miss Dorothy, watching over me like that, you know what I'm fixing to do? I'm fixing to grab that big pillow, put this head on that pillow, and I'm just all night Trusting God that he has my son that's here, my daughter that's in Clover, South Carolina, her husband, my two grandbabies. I'm believing he got them all. Mm -hmm. Listen, it is important that we understand that the promises of God were given to us and those promises, everyone, will happen. Amen. So now, before we look at uh, some additional promises that uh, God has made, we must ask ourselves the question. Now, notice this. This is the question on the screen. It's on your sheet. Huge question. Why is it that we do not see the promises of God come to pass in our lives. Since he promised it, Deacon Piggy, why are we not seeing it? Miriam, since he said it, and he said over 7,000, why is it that sometimes the promises don't match up with our lives? Amen. Now listen, if you figure out why the promises are not coming to pass, and if the problem is you. Now listen, all you have to do is adjust you. <laughs> and so we're going to look at everyone, the reasons why, and I notice this, why do we not see the promises of God come to pass in our lives? Okay, now let's talk about reason number one. You see it on your sheet. It's on the screen. Notice it says this. Reason number one. We may not know. And that's what somebody just said. We may not know. About the many promises that God has made to us. So. It's true. Those promises are true. Sometimes. We just don't know it's true. Now, that's not going to change the fact because you don't know it. It's not going to become false. Uh-uh. We need to be consistently, everyone, Alma Daniels, renewing our minds. That's what we need to do. Renew our minds with the truth. They are true. Now, listen to this. Okay, everybody, you probably need to look this way. So this, is going, this is going to be a cantaloupe. You're going to have to swallow it, though. Okay. In spite of what you have heard, Sister Luckadoo, the Bible does not say, and it is not true, that the truth shall make you free. That's not true, John. You read it wrong. Uh -uh. You read it wrong. Uh -uh. 
See, the truth don't make men free unless by chance they come to know it. Now notice this John 8, 32. Notice what it says. Now throw out of your collection what you were thinking that the truth, Brenda Coleman and Bree, sets you free. It doesn't. Know what? You know why you show up for church on Sunday morning? You know why you study individually Monday through Saturday? Because you want to know the truth. And notice this. And ye shall know the truth. And the truth shall make you free. But now the condition, Deacon sees is you got to know it. You got to know it. Now notice this on your sheet, Hosea 4, 6a. Now we're talking about why does the promises found in the Bible not come true for us? Why are they not true for you? They are truth. Sister Friday, it's true. You just don't know the truth. My people, this is what God says. My people, meaning those here at Mount Pisgah, those at Longley Baptist, those at First Baptist, the ones at Second Baptist, those over there at Third Baptist. <laughs> <laughs> my people they are notice that word destroyed let me ask this do you want to be destroyed do you want your children destroyed do you want your grandchildren destroyed do you want everybody around you destroyed do you want your church destroyed listen my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge that's the problem. They don't know the truth. I've been given out truth since I brought men into the world. I've given them truth. I knew you when I formed you in your mother's womb. I know the plans I have for you. All of that stuff is true. Listen, I'm not worried about the direction that God has taken me. I'm not worried about if somebody don't see that. You know why? Because God said, Gary, I know the plans that I have for you. I know what I have laid out for you. Okay, I see somebody trying to stop them. God said, Gary, don't worry about that. I will take care of anybody in the way. You don't have to worry about that. What I said will come to, plant, to, to a pass. I have plans for you to prosper you. I have plans for your future. And I plan to give you my love. Now, I tell you what didn't come now. The last few Thursdays, I mean, we looked around. I had been here for 15 minutes, and then it was uh, 8 o'clock. So, <laughs> now, we can't have that tonight. Uh -uh. I don't know what happens. We get into a time warp when I come across that bridge. Be standing here for 10 minutes, look up, it's 8 o'clock. And you all be looking at me like, Reverend, no, it's time to go. <laughs> And nothing I can do but say bye, grab your papers. <laughs> now that can't happen tonight. So, notice this. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. So what's the solution to not knowing? Now let me tell you what your top goal. Everyone listen to this. You know, there's good goals, there are better goals, and then there are the best goals, okay? Let me tell you the best goal you can come up with. It should be your top goal. Listen to this. It should be after receiving salvation, your top goal should be to know all that you can about God. That should be your top goal. So how do you do that? Let's talk about something very practically. How, now listen to everyone. What we're trying to do is this. God will give you an opportunity to put this into practice once you walk out of here. 
It will not fall just simply on death. That is why the Bible says the word of God, it is quick and it's powerful. It will do something. If it gets inside of you, it will start working. Because the word, listen to this, my Lord. The word of God is alive. Jesus said this, the words that I speak to you are life. The word is alive. If you can get somebody under the word, the word will change them. You don't have to keep fussing at your spouse. Get them to church or get them to look at something on TV. Get them to look at a DVD. And you know what happened, Miss Merlene? The word itself will do it. It won't be the preacher. It won't be the, uh, the, the persons who are singing. They are simply anointed by God. Listen, I can stand here tonight because I know I never raised my hand to preach. I didn't stand in that line volunteering. Mm -mm. I had other goals that I had for my life until I was riding down the Damascus Road and all of a sudden, this light began to shine. I got knocked off my horse. And all I could say was, who art thou, Lord? He said, I am the one that you don't know, Gary. I came by to introduce myself to you. And I want you, I want you as we progress in our relationship. He said, I want you to preach my word. I said, Lord, I don't have nothing to say. I responded just like Moses did. I responded just like uh, Gideon did. Who am I? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he said, it's not dependent upon you. He said, the spirit of the Lord will sit upon you and you will be anointed. I will anoint you to preach my word. I will anoint you to teach my word. I'm standing here simply because, everyone, I know, I understand what happens when I get in a place where he wants me to give out the word. He gives the anointing. My Lord. And after this, it's chicken eating time. <laughs> you see, he's not going to anoint me to go eat chicken. <laughs> he will anoint me. Now, now, I will go eat. Now, you understand that. You know, but uh, let's talk about what's are some things that you can do. Now listen, everybody needs to listen to this because if the most important thing is for you to know God, there are some things that you need to do. Okay, so now what's the solution? Notice what it says on your sheet. Your top goal in life should be to discover, to know all that you can about God. So now let's talk about some very practical way. Listen to this. If you want to draw closer to God, just raise your hand. If you want a deep relationship with God, raise your hand, a deeper relationship. Okay, one first thing, listen to this. Quit talking on your cell phone so much. If when you get off work and you spend three, four hours on your cell phone, how much time you have left for God? We talk to other people 500 times more then we talk to God and we'll spend 15 minutes in the morning when we get a, a God, tell him whatever we have to tell him or 15 minutes in the evening time. Now, listen, there will have to be since you said you want to draw near and draw closer to God. Notice what God says. Draw nigh unto me, draw nigh to God and he will draw nigh to you. So now notice that if you draw nigh to him, he will see you making the sacrifice. The angels who are called the watchers, Deacon Luckadoo, there are watching angels here. That's what the Bible says. They're called watchers. Now, the, you can't see it, but there are angels posted all around you. And now, you know what they are doing? Listen to this. They have tablets. They have scripts. And they are writing down what you are doing. Now, listen. They have noted the fact that you came to Bible study. They have noted the fact that you are watching online. You know why? They are watchers. And nothing get past God. So after they get through watching, then they have a responsibility, Shell, to go back to God and let, them, let him know what the people of God were doing. 
Now, you will find that out when you get to heaven and on what we call reward day, when you stand before the judgment seat of Christ, that's when you will find out all the rewards that God had, had given out to you. And he will let you know that on this day, February the 16th, he had an, a reward for you simply because it was cold outside, but you came anyway. There was something on TV that you wanted to watch, but you tuned in anyway. You made a sacrifice. And what we're saying on this evening, everyone, somebody needs to put the cell phone down. Somebody need to fast from the cell phone. Okay, second. Stop spending so much time on Facebook and Instagram. Some are Instagram and Facebook junkies. Addicted. Addicted to Facebook. Listen, I... If you want, we're talking about some practical ways, Bree, to move closer to God, Miss Dorothy. Some practical ways. Put the cell phone down. Get off Facebook. You can quit watching so much television. Now listen. I love to watch westerns, I will admit. I love CSI. You know, I love those kind of shows. But I can be sitting there and I'll say to myself, now, Gary, you don't watch enough. You need to get somewhere and study the word of God. I mean, some people are addicted to the news. Listen, if all I'm going to hear, and I'm not saying you shouldn't listen to the news. Listen, if all you're going to hear is bad stuff on the news, why would you let all that go into your spirit? When you can take in the word of God and it gets inside of you. And listen, some people are not, you're not uh, without joy. The problem is, the Bible says the fruit of the Spirit is love and joy. You just may not know the truth that you have joy. I showed up with some joy. I'm not waiting on you all to smile and say, Pastor Noble, we get it. <laughs> listen, showed up with some joy. Showed up with some peace. Showed up with some long suffering. I don't have to ask God to give me long suffering. I have long suffering. The fruits of the spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. I'm not asking God for any of those things. You know why? I know the truth and the truth tells me that I already have them. Why would I ask God, shall to give me something that I already have? But I can get up every morning full of joy when my Feet hit the floor this morning. I shouted, this is the day. I didn't feel like it, but it doesn't matter how I feel. I stepped out and stood on the truth. I said, this is the day that the Lord has made. I have chosen to rejoice and be glad. And why? Because I know that he gives me joy. I know that I have peace which passes all understanding. I have just got to believe it and walk in it. That's it. I know it. I understand it. Believe it. Apply it. It's time to apply it. And then when it gets rough, just stand on it. My Lord. It better not be 750. It just better not be 750. I'm scared to look at the time. Lady, <laughs> like it better not be 750. It just better not be. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Quit spending so much time sleeping. Your body don't need all that sleep. Now listen, I'm not trying to pick on anybody. I really am not. Listen, this is what, this is what we're saying. If you want to see the promises of God come to pass in your life, there will have to be some adjustments you'll, you'll need to do. You'll have to make some adjustments. If you want to draw nigh to him, he said this, draw nigh to me and I will draw nigh to you. You know, so now, all this is up to you, everyone. You need to make some decisions. Now, notice this. What will happen if you do this? Again, notice what it says on the screen. 
draw nigh to God and he will draw nigh to you. And we'll just let Greg know there's something wrong with the screen. Greg, just come out, come out and adjust it as soon as you get the chance to. Yeah. Amen. Give God a hand, God praise. You know what? Satan is so... I know, Miss Murley. <laughs> now, does he really think we're going to sit here and let him stop what we're doing? When the Bible says no weapon formed against us shall prosper. My Lord, did he forget that Greg knows how to operate this thing? <laughs> you have not? Because you don't ask Greg. Now look at it. My Lord. Uh -uh. So now notice this. Let's go to reason number two. Reason number one is we may not know how many promises that uh, God has made for us in the Bible. Now notice reason number two. We may not believe what we read in the Bible. You can know it. Understand it, but at some point you got to believe it. Okay, so notice example number one. What has God said or promised concerning any enemy that you may have? Now listen, sometimes everyone, we worry so much about our enemies. Will they be victorious? Will they uh, overcome me? I mean, will they win? Friend, all I know is this. The Bible has given me some promises about my enemies, and I'm standing on them. Now, notice this. Number two, we may, we may not believe what we read in the Bible. That's reason number two. Now, Romans 12, 19, it says this. Dearly beloved. Now, he gives you a command. Now, listen, this may be this may be a reason why a promise is not seen, because notice what he says. He tells you to do something to do something. Avenge not yourselves. You say, well, Deacon Caesar, he did me wrong. And Jesus says, in order for the promise to come to pass, avenge not yourselves. I can't attack him. Not and still be right with God. So notice what it says, avenge not yourselves, for it is written, and it's written in the Old Testament and the New Testament. This particular verse is, vengeance is mine, I will repay. So for you to try to repay Barbara, he has already said vengeance is mine. You do not look like a Christian trying to repay somebody that has done you wrong. You see, when Judas came to Jesus and kissed him in the Garden of Gethsemane, listen, what Jesus did, everyone, is call Judas his friend. He said, friend. Oh, just get out of here, Satan, in Jesus' name. You know what? Our progress our joy is not dependent on technology. It's not. I still have me some joy. Still have me some peace. Whatever happens, it doesn't matter why. Because my peace was not predicated on everything turning out right. In life, things just don't turn out right. But this I do know, Deacon Piggy, that all of them are working together for my good, which means that one day they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall. Be not weary in well-doing. We doing well on the night. We won't be weary in well-doing. You know why? Because in due season, and due season may just be two minutes away. I don't know. But be not weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap. That's a promise. If God said I'm going to reap it, I'm just waiting. I'm not asking if due season going to show up, Miss Merlene. When is it going to show up? Because I know it ain't. It's coming. I know it's coming. You can't tell me it's not coming. I've been walking with God too long for you to tell me now. 
in February 2023 that he won't do it, that he can't do it, that he will not do it. He will. Seen him do it too many times. Too many times. Again, notice on your sheet. Thank you, Green. Give God a hand cup of praise. <laughs> Imbecilic. <laughs> An imbecile. How can anybody in their right mind try to take over heaven? Imbecilic. If by chance he had one third of the angels, how are you going to try to fight against two thirds of the angels? One angel in the Bible slew 185,000 men in one night. How are you going to fight? If Michael is the archangel, how are you going to fight against Michael in his band? Other, than, other words, how are you going to even fight against me? You know why? Because God told me that I can now, right now, call for more than 12 legions of angels. The best thing for you to do, Miss Flores, I, I, I need to let you know so you don't get hurt. The best thing for you to do is leave me alone. Now listen, I'm not going to avenge myself. I'm not going to come after you. But if you make me cry, I will tell God on you. I will. Don't you make me tell God on you because I will. Push me. The best thing for you to do is leave me alone. Because mm -hmm. I read where he said, you have not. And then he said, ask and you shall receive. Mm -hmm. Romans 12 verse 19. Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, for it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, saith the Lord. Now listen, you may know it, you may understand it, you uh, see what God says that he would do, but it's possible for a person not to believe it. Somebody will say this, well now God is just too nice. He's not going to uh, avenge somebody for me. Now, God is just too nice. Everybody know that God is love. See, there's two sides to God. His love and his justice. Because <laughs> he's not going to renege on a promise. Huh? He said, vengeance is mine. I will repay. That's what he said. Listen. So. If by chance somebody says, I don't believe that God will repay, and I'm fixing to help him out. Now listen, you'll never see God fight for you as long as you're trying to fight for yourself. Uh-uh. He says, you will not need to fight. Stay still. And see, listen, a whole lot of us fighting, friend, I tell you what you need to do. Instead of fighting, go on your knees. <laughs> see, if God can't fix it, it's unfixable. And you can't fix it. There are some things you can't fix. There are some relationships you can't fix. You done tried it. You done fussed and cussed. And had nothing changed. And the last one you done turn to is God. And that should have been the first one you turn to. When things start going wrong, friend, you better turn to God, sister, like I do. Because God can do something with people you can't do anything with. That's not hating on anybody. I know the Bible says for me to love my enemies, so I'm not ever justified hating you. I can't go down that trail, but there is a trail I can go down. I can go down from being five foot ten and get on my knees. My Lord, don't push me, Jones, because I will. <laughs> Some folks didn't call me, just don't believe fat meat is greasy. 
but it's greasy. <laughs> fat, fat meat's greasy. It's greasy. <laughs> it is. Now, notice this. Example number two on your sheet on page. Uh, notice where it says example number two. God has said the following to you. Matthew 5, 4. Notice this. Matthew 5, 44. I say unto you, love your enemies. Love them. Bless them that curse you. Do good to them that hate you. And pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. Some of y'all have already have had to do it. You know, already had to do it. You say, uh, I don't like enemies. Well, you'll never learn to love an enemy until you have one. Huh. You can't tell nobody how to love their enemies. You ain't never had one. What you talking about? How you gonna tell them how to ride a bicycle? Your mama ain't even bought you a tricycle. So you don't even know what you're talking about. <laughs> My Lord. Now let me tell you why leaders, let me tell you this, why leaders and uh, people lead and other people have so many problems. Because God wants you to be able to give the testimony that he could. See, some persons have broad shoulders because they know a broad God. It's not that, li listen, the problem that Normal people have leaders' problems are twice. See, some leaders have to stay up at night. You can go to sleep. Mm -hmm. You can go on sleep. Oh, I don't have to worry about that. We got deacons. We got trustees. Yeah, you don't have to worry about it. No, you don't. But listen, God has uniquely designed some people to take on weight. Jesus took on the weight of the world. He is uniquely designed. Listen, I know. That I can't do anything on my own. But this what this on the opposite, this is what I know. I know that I can do all things through Christ if he'll just give me some strength. I believe that. I've seen him do that. He's done it so many times, time after time after time. You done showed up too late, you Johnny come lately. You done showed up too late to tell me that he won't. I know he will. And it was not by my might. It was not by my power. It was not by my strength. It was by the spirit of the living God. He called me and he said, if I called you, I will equip you. I never wanted to preach. <laughs> Let the truth be told. My mother had seven boys. I could see any of them preaching. Now, I could see that. But you ask my cousins and you ask my brothers if they could see me. <laughs> and they were like, huh? And then they can look at it. Once they realized God had done it, and so like I've told the story before, and I guess my brothers formed a committee. And they had to find out, Miss Flores, what had happened to the Gary that we grew up with. So they sent my oldest brother to ask me. I was about maybe uh, 22. And he said, uh, uh, Gary, uh, uh, we noticed, because, you know, we've been with you for 22 years. Now, we noticed something done happened to you. And we don't know what, but you ain't the same Gary we grew up with. What done happened? I didn't know nothing about the Bible. At 22, I couldn't tell you where Genesis was at. At 22. Huh. I couldn't tell you what Genesis was at. I couldn't tell you what Revelation was at. I was in Bible study one night, right around that same age, and that man started calling out scriptures and flipping through the Bible. I was looking around like, how does all these people know and Gary don't know? And the only thing I could tell my oldest brother was, I said, all I know is that I've been born again. That's all I knew. But listen to this. God can and he will equip anybody, all leaders, uh, even lay persons. He will equip you to do exactly what he's called you to do. You don't have to worry about it. Go to sleep. Now notice this. 
Matthew 5, 44. He says, I say unto you, love your enemies. Bless them that curse you. Do good to them that hate you and pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. Now notice this. Matthew 5, 11. Notice what it says, verse 11. Verse 11 and verse 12. It says, blessed are ye. It's on your sheet, number nine. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Notice this, rejoice. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad. Now listen to this. He's not expecting for you. Listen, you will say, Miss Dorothy, I don't feel like rejoicing. I cannot be exceedingly glad. That's only because, Miss Alma, you don't know the truth. He's not expecting for you to rejoice. He has already put in place joy inside of you. Just believe it. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy. See, I never share without joy. I'm never without joy. I just have to believe it. Every morning, I get up happy. It was raining this morning. I was happy as a lark. Do I have a lot on my plate? Yes, I guess some would say yes. But one thing I realized, it's not my plate. <laughs> uh -uh. I have cast those cares on God. That's his response. I'm going to sleep. I told him a long time ago, God, I can't do that. He said, I never expected for you to do it. You can do all things through me. I will strengthen you if you will just follow me and believe. Listen, it's good for a man or a woman to realize that they can't do anything. Once I realized it was not my responsibility to come up with something to preach about or how to preach, I was quite satisfied. <laughs> I said, okay, Lord, you're saying I don't have to sit around and figure out what I'm going to talk about? Now, listen, I'm going to let you know something. I don't ever sit around and think about what I'm going to preach. Ever. I don't sit around and think about what I'm going to teach. Ever. Just do it. <laughs> listen, out of... The studying that I do, when the Bible says study to show yourself approved, he will say, preach this. I will say, Lord, that sounds good to me. <laughs> yeah, I want to preach. That sounds real good to me to preach about. <laughs> Listen, but I'm not sweating. You don't have to sweat when God has called you and he has given you all these promises. Listen, it's not about you. Huh, it's not about you. Get in and learn that. Abraham learned that. Moses learned it. I just didn't want to take 40 years to learn it. Uh -uh. Moses said, I, I stutter. God said, did I not make the vocal cords? Uh, huh? I invented vocabulary. And once you realize, Deacon Luckaloo, that you don't have to worry and that everything is under God's control. Now listen, let's settle this tonight. If it's not under God's control, women, grab your pocketbooks. Men, grab your backpacks. Grab your sweaters. Whatever you got to grab, let's get up and go and walk through those double doors because everything we say is not true. If God doesn't have it completely 100% under control, it just looks like it's out of control. Thanks be to God who giveth me the victory. Thanks be to God who always, always, always causes me to triumph. I don't ever lose. I'm sorry. Don't ever lose. It just looks to you like I'm losing. You see, it looked like to Joseph's brothers that he was losing because they threw him in a pit. It looked like he was losing. When they put him out of the pit and sold him into slavery, it looked like he was losing. When he got down to Egypt as a slave, it just looked like he was losing. When Sister Potiphar said, he done put his hands on me, it just looked like he was losing. He had to go to prison. But one day, there was a knock on that prison door 
And the guard said, you come out of there. He said, what you want? He said, you just come out. He came out, stood before Pharaoh, and Pharaoh said, can we find another man like this? It just looked like you losing. You're not losing. You're not losing. It just looked that way. And it looks that way to an unbeliever or somebody who don't have enough faith to know that all things are working together. My Lord, go to sleep. Almost scared to look at the time. <laughs> Lord, just give me 10 more minutes. Let me have 10 more minutes, Lord. <laughs> No, no, it cannot be 755, it cannot be. <laughs> I told you there's a time warp in Jacksonville. I've been, I may have been standing here for 13 minutes at the most. <laughs> now, come on. I don't know what y'all are doing. My Lord. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad. Bless are ye when men shall revive you and persecute you and shall say all matter against you false for my name's sake. Notice this. Rejoice, verse 12. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad. For great is your reward in heaven. For so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. Notice this. Mark 9, 23. Jesus said, if thou canst believe. Guess what? You got a headache for nothing. You just got to believe. If thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. Reason number three. Why we don't see the promises happen. Notice on your sheet. Uh, reason number three. We go by what we see, by what it looks like. It's on the screen. Instead of what God says. Well, it looks like this. It looks like that. All of us have been there. Done. I mean, you just learn better. You do better when you look, when you uh, learn better. Now, notice this. Now, this is somebody going by what they see. Notice what it says. Uh, Mark 4, uh, verse 35 through 37. Notice what it says. And the same day when the even was come, he said unto them, let us pass over. In other words, go over to the other side. Now, he didn't say, Deacon Cobra, we're going to get halfway and it's going to start to rain and it's going to start to thunder and you're going to hear all the, the see the lightning flashing and then we're going to stop and then I want you, to, want you to run back to the same side that you just left from. He didn't say that. <laughs> Notice the promise. Let us pass over onto the other side. Now, this is the promise. There's a promise, but there's always a problem with the promise, Deacon Lucker do. Always a problem with the promise. This is the problem. And there arose a great storm. It was only there to test their faith. And the waves beat into the ship so that it was full. Notice this. And he was in the hinder part of the Ship what? What did we just say? Go to sleep. If God and the angels are going to be up all night, why are you up? <laughs> uh -uh. If, if all night and all day the angels are watching over me, I might as well go to sleep. Listen, he, was, he gives us an example of what to do in the middle of a storm. Notice what it says. He was in the hinder part of the ship asleep on a pillar. And they await him that he's sleeping good. They wake him up and say, Master, cares thou not that we perish? And he arose and rebuked the wind and said unto the sea. He done said it many times in your life. He'll say it on this evening. He'll say it tomorrow. He'll say it this coming Saturday. He'll say it next week. He'll say, peace be still. And everything that's rambunctious have got to stop. If it's rambunctious, when he says, peace be still, it just got to stand there. 
peace be still. And the wind ceased and there was a great calm. Now notice what he says in verse 40. It says Mark 5, 40, but it should be Mark 4, 40. Notice it says, and he said to them, why are ye so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? That was his response to him. How is it that you have no faith? Grab your papers. Grab your papers. Go ahead and grab them. Mm. We start on time, we end on time. Grab your papers. Ain't no sense. <laughs> Trying to fold them up slowly. Grab your papers. It's over. <laughs> now we do. Let us pray. Dear great God of heaven, it has been our privilege to have spent this hour with you. Oh, Lord, this has been our pleasure to have spent 60 minutes with you, talking about you, learning about you. God, thank you so very, very much because we know we didn't deserve it, but God, you did it for us. We thank you so very much that you spent 60 minutes with us. Thank you. Since you were the dying sacrifice, help us to be living sacrifices. It's in the powerful, magnificent, supernatural name of Jesus that we pray. Everybody go ahead and shout amen. Amen. Shout amen. 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 My Lord. My Lord. This man. My, my, my. He said, peace be still. <laughs> Won't he will? He showed up will. He will. Amen. Thank you for that, Sister Merlene.